morning, Menifee, on this Tuesday, January 22nd. This is Doug again from Menifee 24-7, bringing you another episode of our favorite TV show, Good Morning Menifee, on the Facebook page, Monday through Friday. Wondering if uh, any of you saw the Blood Moon display that was Sunday night. I missed it. I must have forgotten all about it. But take a look at these photos that were sent to us by um, Bruno Stegman. And these are, these are pretty amazing photos of the different stages as it went through the blood moon. What happens is it's a, to a total lunar eclipse. Um, and it, as some research told me here, because I really know nothing about it, it reveals the orbital cycles that are uh, the heavenly bodies in the solar system perform on a regular basis, how they rotate orbit around each other. So lunar eclipses are a reminder that the moon's orbit is tilted slightly with respect to the Earth. For the moon to pass through Earth's shadow, which is what happened the other night, the sun must be opposite the moon on the other side of the planet. So we're going right in between these two bodies, and only during a full moon phase do you get a lunar eclipse like this. So why don't they occur every month? Since the lunar orbit is tilted slightly, it often travels over or under Earth's regular shadow. In this particular case, the moon traveled through the top portion of Earth's umbra, they call it, to produce a noticeable dimming over the entire face of the moon Sunday night and into Monday morning in some places. So whenever I try to take a nice picture of the moon, I never get a clear shot. Maybe I don't have the equipment. I've got a friend uh, who you may have seen these on the internet who loves to take pictures of the moon as a plane is crossing by. But uh, Bruno did a great job on this and we thank him for sending us those photos. That was kind of a neat thing. Okay, um, we talked about uh, Monday being Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday and how there were observances, including one at uh, Mount San Jacinto College. So we wanted to show you a couple pictures from that. They had about 150 people that was over at the San Jacinto campus, and they gathered to listen to Dr. Jordan B. Smith Jr. He was the speaker, gave a speech entitled, My Path of Resistance Through Racism. He teaches math at uh, Mountain View High School, an alternative school in San Jacinto. He's a former Marine. Um, they also had an art contest where students could display through art their feelings about uh, society, uh, intolerance, racism, how do we fight those kind of things. Uh, there's a picture here from uh, Wayne Yeager Jr. of Hemet. He's a student at MSJC and his uh, structure, I guess you would call it, won first place in the art contest for mixed media art installation and it represents poverty, racism, and other societal changes. Um, we, there was also a piece from uh, Delisa Williams of Banning. She won honorable mention for her dream come true art that features Dr. King and President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. You can see that kind of off to the side on this one picture. So um, we wanted to give you some highlights of that and let you know, as we try always to do on these three-day weekend holidays, that they're more than just an extra day off from school or from work that there are reasons that we observe these people. Um, we've had a lot of holidays lately, so maybe we'll uh, be back to the grind here for a while now. Before we go on today, let's take a moment to pause, and Tommy and I have a message for you. Take a look. Hi, Doug and Tommy here with Menifee 24-7, and we've got a message for you. Now, Tommy, if you wanted to get the word out about a business that you had in town, what do you think would be the best way to do it? Well, I could start social media, I could tell my friends, but the best option probably would be to find the biggest platform around town that could get the word out about what I'm doing and do advertisement with them. Hmm. And is there anywhere that has maybe a reach of like 35,000 Facebook followers, half a million hits a month on their website? Um, a morning show that gets a lot of views? Mm, I think there's one that I'm familiar with. It's called Menifee 24-7. Ah, oh. so if you have a business out there and you want to expose it to more 
potential customers, Menifee 24 seven is the advertising platform for you. And we have a variety of packages. One thing you can do is sponsor one of our Good Morning Menifee shows. That'd be a great way to uh, have a video inserted in our show. You can produce it or we can produce it for you. Um, you can also have digital print ads in the newspaper on our website. Um, that's the way to go if you want to publicize your business in Menifee. So if you're interested, give us a call at 951-729-9875 or email info at menifee247.com and we'll get right back to you. Okay, we're back and we're talking about one of your favorite topics, the Scott Road Bridge construction. We get these updates once every week or two um, on the lanes that are closed, not closed, intermittent closures. Uh, we kind of leave it up to you to drive carefully and, and see what's happening as you approach the area because there are so many of these changes. Uh, but we wanted to bring this one to your light because we also had a photo to show you. You can see this picture that was sent to us uh, by Gina Gonzalez from the city of Menifee. Uh, this shows them um, erecting the uh, columns for the new bridge, which is going to be just north of the old bridge. And if you go out there, you'll also see a lot of the rebar and ditches and things going on as there. You can see them building the new northbound on-ramp and some of the other things that are going on. Now, between um, Wednesday and Friday nights, starting at 11 p.m., so through the nighttime hours, uh, Wednesday through Friday, the next couple of weeks, uh, the bridge will be closed to through traffic and the on-ramps will be closed. So be aware of that. If you're finding uh, you need to get on the freeway, you're probably gonna have to take Newport or another way to get on and off there. Um, necessary work that they have to do to get that bridge done. Of course, we're all awaiting that. Uh, we'll be awaiting that probably for another year or more before it's finished, but what the heck, gotta be done, right? So everyone just drive slowly, take whatever routes you can to get around it. Uh, but especially remember these warnings for the evenings. Now, I don't know if you're aware of it, but on January 27th, which is coming up in just a few days, the new U.S. postal rates take effect. We got another increase. So uh, I guess we haven't gotten to the point where we can do everything online yet or by phone. Some of us still get our bills and our junk mail and whatever in our mailboxes when they're not broken into, of course, as you can see here, it still does happen. We haven't heard about it as much lately. Unfortunately, we've been kind of hearing more about auto break-ins, uh, but as I've suggested before, always go out and get your mail uh, before the end of the day, make sure that it's safe. But now to send mail, the price of a one ounce metered letter is going up from 47 cents to 50 cents. And there will be some other rates uh, increasing as well. So uh, if you have questions about it, I would go to usps.com. Make sure that you're correctly uh, putting the postage on things that you need to get through. And uh, if you don't wanna do that and you wanna do online, all you have to worry about is identity theft and viruses. So hey, things are looking up, right? That's it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow on Good Morning Menifee.